our garages are busy. They're home to bands and band saws, places to practice handiwork or avoid housework. On a quiet street in Eau Claire, there's a garage that's home to Eric Lee's lifelong passion. I've become very fond of it out here. I actually really miss it if I'm not working out here. It's just a dedicated space where I know I'm coming to work to do something. His passion? Art. It's a love affair that began in grade school. Drawing, you know, like any kid, just draw a lot. And I just never stopped doing it. I really learned from drawing transformer boxes. <laughs> I, I actually traded with kids to uh, get their boxes from them, not their toys, so I could learn how to do what they were doing on the boxes at the time. Throughout high school, Eric's love for art blossomed into admiration for painters of the Northern Renaissance and 20th century surrealists. After high school, I ended up moving to Superior. That was a real eye-opener for me. Eric was fascinated by the city and its industrial architecture. Superior gave me what I ended up working with in painting for the next 10 to 15 years. And it just seemed like an entirely different place altogether. The big grain elevators, the docks, the neighborhoods were completely different. Eric eventually moved back to Eau Claire, where he'd gone to high school. He took up odd jobs, studied art in college, got married, and bought a house. Of course, making art didn't always mean making money. And after school, uh, the truth is I couldn't get work. And it was a hard struggle for a while. But one thing led to another. I started making furniture and um, different things for people. One item in particular seemed to catch on. I really started going full blast into the, the drum building. An accomplished drummer himself, Eric started building specialty wooden snare drums. I started out real basic and made a lot of mistakes, made some really terrible shells and made drums that sounded just awful. And then slowly worked my way up from there and about a year into it, I made a decent drum. In the years since, Eric has churned out dozens of wooden drums from his garage. The wood comes from a familiar place. The Superior Connection, again, comes in with the Globe Elevator, which was a place I used to, well, I used to trespass there every Sunday pretty much and walk around. <laughs> when people were watching football, I'd go in there and yeah, that was what I would do. But then when I moved back here, I got to know the people who were dismantling the Globe Elevator. Wonderful people and they're selling off the lumber for, for people to put in their houses and you know make all sorts of things from. And I managed to get some of the hardwood that was used in the elevator, oak, and started using that in the drums themselves. With income from his drums, Eric pursued his passion for art. In the shelter of his garage, that pursuit took unique, even explosive turns. I like oil painting and I do very meticulous, I guess you could call it very highly representational art, but I guess more modern techniques. I use explosives, I use flammables, and what it ends up looking like is sort of a mixture between uh, abstraction and very sharply focused representational work. The subject matter is coming almost entirely from my experiences in Superior. My work up till now is kind of focused on collapse and cycles, life cycles of towns and cities and people. How generations start something and maybe it doesn't continue, maybe it does. And I'm really hoping that people who see this and aren't sure what they're seeing will have a reaction similar to the one I had when I first laid eyes on things that I guess drove me to make this stuff in the first place. That's kind of what I'm trying for, It's just to be honest in that it will resonate in others. And it seems Eric's work is resonating with others. His pieces have been shown at openings around the Midwest, like this one in Eau Claire. But with success comes change. I'm sort of stepping into new directions now, new, new things. It'll still have a lot of things in common with this work, but I see myself as going into the next, the next phase. As his work changes, so is his workspace. Eric is moving, 
leaving his old garage behind. We just needed more room. This place will have a uh, restored barn, so I don't have to worry about, you know, shorting the house out when I start a saw. It's, yeah, it's gonna be great. Still, Eric says he'll miss this garage, the light from its windows, the stories on its walls. But he'll take something else with him, a bit of wisdom about work. If you can stand out in what you're doing, and you believe enough in what you're doing that you're willing to put in the time and the work, I see no reason whatsoever a person can't do exactly what they want to do now.